So the FFT is a very powerful algorithm. It can, is very efficient, lets us compute the frequency content of signals in a very efficient manner. One thing that we often use the FFT for in practice is for filtering signals and doing convolution. You can think of the input and output of a discrete time, linear time invariant system as being related via convolution. And you can just use the CONV, the convolution operator in MATLAB, if you actually wanted to do that. But typically, that's not a very fast way to do it. It's usually much better to go into the frequency domain and use the fact that the input and output of discrete time LTI systems are related via multiplication in the frequency domain. So it might sound like it'd be slower, but often it's faster to take signals, take them into the frequency domain via the FFT, multiply, and then do an inverse fast Fourier transform to get back to the time domain to do the convolution. This is often much faster than doing a convolution in the time domain because the FFT itself is such an efficient algorithm. One of the things that you have to be careful with, though, is that underlying the math of the FFT, we are assuming that we are dealing with a periodic signal. So technically, if you just do that process I described, you aren't going to get linear convolution out, you're gonna get what's called circular convolution. But we typically want linear convolution, the way that we think about convolution in our linear systems classes. So to actually get the right answer, the actual answer that you want, something like y of k is equal to f of k convolved with g of k, you have to make sure that you pad your signals with the appropriate number of samples so that you get out a linear convolution and not a circular convolution. So the way to do that is very easy. We're not going to prove this or derive why this is the case. We're just going to understand how to apply this algorithm right here. What you do is, let's say that f of k has length n1 and g of k has length n2. What we're going to do is we're going to pad them to a common size. So we're going to pad the signal f of k to, we're going to pad it with n sub 2 minus 1 samples. We're actually going to add zeros, and the number of zeros we add is going to be n sub 2 minus 1. And we're also going to pad g of k, and we're going to pad it so we get to n sub 1 minus 1 samples. Now that we have signals that are basically the same length, we are going to go ahead and compute the Fourier train, or the DFT of these signals. We're going to compute f of r and g of r. So we can do that using just the FFT. So now we're going to be in the frequency domain, and each one of these signals in the frequency domain is going to have the exact same length. We can then do an element-wise multiplication of these. We're going to take f of r times g of r, and then we can use the inverse fast Fourier transform to go from the frequency domain back to the time domain, and this will actually give us the convolution that we are looking for. And this is something you do very often. Anytime you do signal processing, you want to do some type of filtering or convolution, doing it this way in the frequency domain is often the best way and the fastest way to do that type of operation or this convolution operation. Let's look at some pictures here. Let's say that I wanted to convolve the sequence f of k that looks like this with the sequence g of k that looks like this. Well, one way to do that is actually just to use the MATLAB convolution operation. And if you use the MATLAB convolution operation, it will return a linear convolution, and the answer that you would get would look something like this. So this is the convolution of those two signals. However, if you're dealing with much longer signals, in general this would not be a very good way to do it because convolution in time is a very slow operation. A better way to do it is to use the FFT to go into the frequency domain, do multiplication in the frequency domain, and then go back to the time domain using the inverse fast Fourier transform. If you the algorithm that we described and you pad your signals with zeros appropriately to get them to the appropriate length, you can have the FFT perform linear convolution for you. This is a picture of the convolution having done convolution in the frequency domain via multiplication and we see that the answer we get here is exactly the same. So right now we're just looking at the final output of the picture, and we see that this approach gave us the exact same, op same output as using the convolution operator in MATLAB. In the next video, we'll actually walk through the code that did this to see exactly how this padding worked and exactly how we did both these com computations in MATLAB.